Okay guys, we are back again with another video. Now, now what we're gonna be doing today is taking you through how you can go ahead and do a Photoshop edit. Um, so what I mean by that is take a photo um, and adapt it and change the landscape, change the environment completely to something that you have thought up, something in your imagination that you want to create. So I guess you could say like a sort of landscape or a world that you want to create through Photoshop. So this is my Instagram account. Um, it'd be great if you guys go and follow it. We're on 6,299 followers. If we can get that to 6.5K, that'll be absolutely epic. So these are some of the photos I've done. Now, for example, one this photo here, this was all done on Photoshop, and this is a collection of photos I've taken and some photos that you can get off uh, the internet here. I did this one as well. That one can be done on Photoshop. Um, so I recommend you go and check out my Instagram account, it'll be uh, really help. Uh, also if you want to go and check out my brother's Instagram account, um, he does similar sorts of stuff, he does photography um, mostly, but he does do some Photoshop art as well. This is his account, um, go drop him a follow as well. Okay, so this uh, tutorial is probably going to end up uh, about 15, maybe 20 minutes long. Um, so. If you don't want to watch the entire thing, you can skip through some different steps. But the idea is, I'm just going to show you the rough basics of how you would do this. At the moment, this is the color graded photo you're seeing. So if I turn off that layer, this is what the original file looks like. Now, the main important thing to take into account when you're doing something like this is perspectives and also color. Now, this photo isn't going to work if, for example, I used a photo of the city at uh, midday. So bright orange ears, bright yellows, really bright photo of the city midday, and then I used a photo of the night sky, and then I used a photo of a sunset in the foreground, it's not gonna fit, it will just clash massively. So before you do anything, you want to plan out what your photo looks like, maybe draw out a piece of paper roughly what you have in your mind, or just plan out in your mind what the image is going to look like. In this case, I had this image here in the foreground, and I wanted to have this girl looking over the city with a really nice big sky in the background. So that's that was my basis. I then decided I wanted it to be at night time, so then I chose that it's going to be blues, and then I went and selected all of my photos and then compiled the entire image to look like this. Now, the most important thing is locating these photos. Now, there are some good sites. The one I always use is Unsplash. Uh, if you go into Unsplash, all of the photos in there are available for you to download and do what you want with. That is the basis of this website. Now, I will say if you do use some of these photos, uh, it is nice sometimes just to tag the photographer or just to give them credit for their photo, because after all, they did take that photo. Now, the way this works is you're gonna want to type in what you want. So for example, if we want a city, just type in city, and it will come up with loads and loads of different city photos. Then all you need to do is decide what photo you're going to select. Now, the way I did this was I already had my foreground photo, and then I was looking for a city that was really zoomed out. So in this case, this won't work. The perspectives are completely wrong. You want something where it will look correct. So for example, here, this would work because it's taken from a hill looking down on the entire city. This wouldn't work because it's taken from a helicopter um, or either that from one of the windows of these buildings. So it's really important that you select the correct image. Okay, so the first thing you want to do once you open up Photoshop is you want to create the file. You want to create a new file, um, and I always make mine 1080 by 1350 pixels. That's because that is the uh, largest portrait photo you can have on Instagram. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to paste in your uh, photo files into your Photoshop document. Now in this case, I decided I wanted to remove the background. I didn't want it to be in uh, a natural environment. I wanted it to be in somewhere man-made, hence the fact it's now looking over the city. So what I then did is I went to the quick selection tool. You can increase the brush size by pressing the uh, close square brackets and I literally just went along and I selected the background of the image. Now you can see here the quick selection tool does an all right job but it then crops out the girl as well and also these trees. So what you can do here is you press the option key which makes it to the negative uh, which will get rid of our selection and then we just draw over where we want to keep. Now one thing you'll notice is when we click on the mask tool is it's actually going to delete our foreground. So you can see here that's not what we wanted it to do. So you want to come over and press shift command I. That's if you're using a Mac. If you're using a PC I think it's shift control I. If you can't find that just come up here and search for invert selection um, and it will go over and it will 
invert your selection. So now when you press this button, we keep the foreground. Okay, so if we come up and click on select mask, you'll see that the edges look a little bit fuzzy and hazy, and that's not the look we're going for. So we're just gonna bring this transparency down to about 50% here so we can see the background, but we can also see that we're actually just taking the foreground from this image. Now, it depends on what your image is. In this case, we've got rocks, so we've got very sharp, defined features. So we're gonna drag this contrast up to about 30%, and you'll see immediately the rocks look a lot better. The problem we've got is the girl's hair here is gonna be very sharply cut off, and also around the trees, we wanna make sure those edges are a lot finer. So we can come in, we can zoom in to the parts we want to make sure are in a selection, and we can just brush over them with this tool, and we can increase the feathering size ever so slightly. So when we come over and click OK, and then we click on this, uh, select some mask down here, you can see it's removed the best part of the background. What you're going to want to do now is go in and make the final adjustments. Um, the reason we use a mask and we don't just delete the background is because if we want to place something back in again from the original image, we can do that. We haven't lost any uh, data or information. So by pressing the uh, brush key um, and selecting down here in the colors white and also black, um, we can paint in or remove stuff from this image. We're going to select the black color and we're going to come in and we're just going to try and sort out as best we can around this girl's head. Now you can see at the moment I've got my hardness on 0% and um, there are two ways you can get your hardness. You can come up here uh, onto this section and you can adjust your hardness or you can do control click on the part you're editing and it will come up with this where you can adjust the size and hardness and the brush type. Now for things where you want a solid defined line you're going to want to have your hardness uh, probably on about 80 to 100 percent. If there's something where you want it to be soft, put your hardness to zero. Okay, so that is the uh, foreground basically sorted at the moment. Okay, so I've now pasted in uh, the city. Um, now what you can do again is here we're going to want to remove the sky from this image. But the first thing is we're going to make sure we put it below our foreground just by clicking and dragging the layer into the correct place. Now already it's looking uh, fairly realistic, you can see the perspectives look all right, everything seems to be matching fairly well. However, because the sky here cuts off and also we were thinking of adding in uh, the aurora in the background for our sky, we don't want this sky that is provided in this current image. Now there are uh, two things you can do here. One, you can do what we did on the previous image and go on the selection tool and select the sky and then do your selection mask and delete that selection like we did on the previous image. Um, the only issue with that is because you see here the buildings are very thin and also they're basically the same color as the sky, you'll find that when you try and use a selection mask, for example on this building here, it's actually very hard to make sure you get an accurate selection of all the buildings and none of the sky. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the selection mask tool, it's going to bring up this here and we do the same thing as we did before, press the brush tool, put it on black, then control click and reduce the hardness to zero. And then all we're going to do is just brush and remove the sky. Now, if you put the brush tool up as large, fairly large, you'll do this and you can see it creates a nice gradient uh, where it removes the sky. You can see here it seems to be looking alright, the only issue is we've started to remove the uh, actual city down here. So if you come over back onto your brush tool, press X to swap to white. So now what we can do is paint everything back in that we have deleted by accident. So if you just click here, you can see we're now painting back in the city. Um, one thing to do is just click where you want it. Um, in this case, I would put the hardness to about 63% because we've got the, with the hardness on zero, you're going to basically add back in the gradient. Um, so you put it on about 60%, click where you want, shift click, and then drag all the way along just to create a solid line. And there we go, we're probably done for that. Now, what you're going to want to do is, the next thing you're going to want to do is add in the next layer, which in our case are the mountains. Um, again, go back onto Unsplash, or if you've got any mountain photos that you've taken, get those photos, save them, and then put them into your Photoshop document, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I've just copied across the mountains that I used in this document to the new document that we're working on. Um, now, if I turn off all of these layers, um, you can see how this started. What I did is I created a new layer, so you can do that by pressing this button here, um, and I'll start on the outside here, and I'll turn off these this image. Uh, if you go onto the pen tool, uh, which is this one here, you can get a shortcut there by pressing P, 
make sure your stroke there's no f uh, don't want any stroke and you want your fill to be black and then what you want to do is basically draw what your mountain looks like there are two things you can do for mountains one you can just paste in a photo and crop out the background of the mountain that you get after your offline or a photo that you've taken the second thing you can do is just draw your own mountain and then copy in another mountain below it and use the texture from that image to create your mountain. Now this mountain is not going to look very realistic because I did it in about two seconds but basically the idea is draw roughly a mountain shape like this. You're going to want to put it again below this uh, layer you're going to want to put right at the back so the very lowest layer because it needs to be behind the city and also behind the foreground and you can see here we've now got the outlines of a black mountain which doesn't exactly look realistic obviously um, not to mention the mountain outline isn't very good either um, but obviously you can spend more time on that if you wanted to now the next thing to do is uh, go online and find a mountain photo you paste in your image drag it roughly to where your mountain is okay then what you want to do is press the alt key hold near the bottom of that image and then click and what that's going to do is create a clipping mask of this image to the pen uh, the outline that you just drew then what you can do is by pressing V you can then drag that mountain to roughly where you want it and what we're aiming to do here is just basically use the textures of the mountain image we've just downloaded from the internet to make our mountain look realistic um, and once you've done that you then want to make sure that this all blends well with the rest of the image and you can do that through adjustment layers <clears throat> now if you remember right, right back to the beginning of this video um, I mentioned that you want to make sure all the colors are correct um, the way to do that is to come down to this tool here and click on uh, adjustment layer and you want to create one uh, first of all hue saturation now in this case we're probably going to want to drag it to around 13 something like that um, we can then adjust things like the brightness uh, actually before we go any further make sure you press alt and click so it just selects every layer whenever you do alt click it just makes sure it only adjusts the layer below it uh, and it doesn't adjust the rest of the image uh, so we can now come and adjust the saturation I'd reduce the saturation a tiny amount and we can also change the lightness as well again you want to reduce that because it's night time uh, I'm doing these really quickly you can spend more time on them and um, the next thing you want to do is come down here again you want to click on brightness slash contrast press alt click on the bottom of that layer just to attach it to shape 2 down here which is our mountain layer and then again you can adjust the brightness, reducing the brightness a bit, really increasing the contrast, it all depends on how your images match and go together. The next thing you want to do is, already this is looking like it's fitting fairly well, it may be a little bit too bright, we can adjust those later. Um, come down and click on curves. Um, now this curves layer, all depends on how much you're willing to go, how far you're willing to go. I usually do a nice S curve with a bit of fade, so increase the highlights ever so slightly, decrease the shadows, and then just lift up the shadows like that just to fade it in uh, and you can also reduce the increase of uh, put some fade on the highlights as well now the final thing really uh, before we get into the details is the sky again go and find your sky image whether that's a photo you've taken or you get it offline paste it into your document and then this one is really quick and really simple and easy to do we haven't got to delete any backgrounds we just literally paste it in and blend it so okay so this is the image that I used if I put it right at the beginning you can see what the image looks like so I'm gonna bring that layer right to the back behind everything that's in the foreground including the mountain that I just drew so the next thing we're going to do here is blend, blend the sky to the background so blend the sky to the foreground okay so the next thing we're gonna do is come to the mountain layer and I'm just gonna basically fade out the edge of this mountain it looks a bit too sharp if you look down here it's it's slightly faded on the top like a sort of misty sort of look I guess you could say here it's just one block solid color so what we're gonna do is come over to the uh, image and we're gonna click on the gonna click on this mask button it's gonna give us a mask here we're then going to click on the brush tool or we can press B uh, then we're gonna press X to make it black and then we're gonna control click reduce the hardness to zero then what we're gonna do is press the uh, close square bracket making it quite large and then we're just going to around the top edges of the mountain and we're just going to try and remove ever so slightly um, you can see it's kind of fading out the top of the mountain as though there's some sort of mist going on and you can see it fits a lot better with this mountain here now what we're going to do is we're going to want to put a fade 
behind the city and mountains to the sky because when you look at a night sky you'll usually notice that the horizon is brighter than the top of the sky. The way to do this is to uh, come behind the mountains and foreground layer. You're going to want to click on new layer uh, and then come over to the gradient tool clicking it up here so we can select any color we want and you want to make sure you're clicked on this one. Once you've clicked on that you'll notice you can choose any color and it will go from any color to transparent. Now if you click on this button here we can then come down to color and select whatever color we want. That's the color I'm going to use might make it a little bit brighter. Um, you want to go for something that's dependent on the time of day you're going for. So for night time you want to go for something that's white, uh, pale blue. Select something like a bluey white for night time. For uh, evening you want to go for something like an orangey red. And for the middle of the day, again, maybe sort of yellows. You can tell from what you can see during the day. Um, so once we've done that, all we're going to do is you want to press click and drag. Um, and then obviously because this can move, you want to make sure this this gradient wants to come up directly vertical. So you want to press shift just to center it, make it, and you can see it's lifted up like this. Um, and ignoring this part of the mountain here, because that mountain is actually part of the sky layer. So by doing this, we're actually going to be covering the mountain here, but obviously not this one. Um, so ignoring that there, you can see it begins to blend a little bit better. We can add more, we can make it whiter. Um, we can just mess around with the colors until we get the look we're going for. The idea is just to make sure there's a fade from the landscape to the sky. I'm going to come over to fill, take the fill down and take the opacity down and actually I think I will put it on linear dodge add uh, and then just mess around with these here. Just so until until like you think it looks realistic pretty much. So if I remove that layer and uh, put it back in you can see the difference it makes. Just helps blend the landscape to the sky a little bit more. Now we're going to sort out these mountains here, so we're going to click on our, we're going to just call this fade or something like that. Click on, give it a mask, press brush to make it black, um, decrease it to zero. In this case I'm going to put the opacity up to 100, but I am going to make the brush size very large. Press down here and basically just click and you can see that the feathering from this brush is just deleting some of the layer that we've just painted on. Now you'll notice on this edit here I also did the same thing behind the rock layer. Um, so what you can do is you can probably if you wanted to uh, come to your foreground you can click uh, option or alt and drag and you can basically copy your fade layer and what it will do is it will put it well where you drag it to so it's going to put it behind the person slash the foreground layer. Um, I'm just going to paint back in all of the gradient and then what we can do is press command T rotate it drag it down press alt uh, and then stretch it sideways so that stretches it equally uh, from both sides from the center in this case the colors aren't exactly correct so you, what you might want to do is create a new layer do the same thing again with the gradient tool as I just said just do it with a slightly lighter color. What to do is find a hot air balloon PNG. Now you can do this by coming online and searching for hot air balloon PNG um, and most of these you'll find are in the public domain so you are able to use them if you want to. Now I already have some downloads that I used for this but I'm just showing you uh, basically to give you an idea of what you're looking for. Um, you want to make sure that you are looking for something that is again of the right perspective. Now if you look at the ones I used they're looking at the balloon but slightly up from underneath the balloon. Not too far but they are looking up from underneath the balloon ever so slightly. Um, that's because the balloon is obviously higher in the sky than the perspective of the person who apparently took this picture. Now we're going to place our, once we, our balloon files have been placed in, into our document, um, we're going to just basically resize them and place them where we want to on the image. Um, I have already adjusted the colors on these so I'm just going to turn those layers off leave it as something like that. Now it depends, maybe you want this balloon to be further back than this one. If it's further back, again just make it smaller. It's fairly simple, uh, self-explanatory really. Um, you'll notice that these balloons are actually indeed the same balloon. You can see from the colors. So I thought that's a little bit obvious. So I came down to again here, uh, I clicked on a new adjustment layer, hue and saturation, which is this one. And then all I did was move the hue slider up to 166, just as a random number, and that will change the colors of the balloon, um, as you can see there. Uh, I then decreased the saturation and then made it a lot darker. Uh, we're making it darker because it's at night time. We're decreasing the saturation because you tend to find at night time you have less vivid colors, uh, obviously because there's less light and stuff. <laughs> now the next thing to do, uh, I like to do 
for nighttime photos is getting the color balance adjustment layer. So again, click down here and then select color balance. It will create a new color balance adjustment layer. Um, and I like to drag it down to the more cyans and magentas. In effect, adding more blues or turquoises and more purples. Now, if it was mid uh, sort of afternoon, evening, you drag it up to the reds and add some more yellows. It just depends on the time of day. So in this case, I put it to minus 22 and minus 18 if you wanted to copy those numbers. The next thing I did was again come down to here, click on uh, a new adjustment layer, and you want to add a curves layer. Don't have to do curves, I just like doing it because I can add a bit of a fade to the background. This is what my curve looked like, again if you want to copy that. Um, that just adds some fade to the balloon so it just kind of flattens the image a little bit more because it's further away, it's not going to be as vivid, sharp and bright. The last thing I did was add in some trees, I wanted to kind of frame the image a little bit more. Okay, so when you are downloading a tree image, so for example this one, basically, good di uh, basically you want to have a good contrast from the foreground to the background. You want to make sure that your background colour is light if you can and your foreground colour is dark. And we can use the quick selection tool um, and we can increase the brush size by pressing close square bracket and just select the tree. Now we can select the foreground as well but that's not a big deal because we can delete that later. Uh, you can come down and click on select mask and you can see it does a fairly good job of removing the background. Now that's not completely perfect, so what we're going to do is come over to the Select and Mask button. Uh, click on Shift Edge. I decrease the edge. All it does is move the selection of your image further inwards. So we're going to remove that, put it down until it starts to look a little bit better. Okay, and now what we can do is click OK, and we're just going to click down here on the mask and see what difference it makes. Okay, so what we can do now is click on this here and come down to Darken. Darken will get rid of all of the whites in the image, and if we press, for example, Lighten, that will get rid of all the darks in the image. In this case, we want to click on Darken because we want to remove the sky, and you can see it's basically done the image to exactly what we want. But for sake of argument, this is what you would do. You just remove the background like this. Okay, so that's a really bad job, but in effect, it looks all right. So now what we can do is drag the tree to where we want the tree to be. Let's say we put it here. I mean, and obviously relative to her, she is roughly two thir a third of the size of the tree, so that's not correct. We're going to want to increase this tree size until it looks all right, um, and then drag it into position. Uh, in this case, that's probably a reasonable size. Uh, I would say you want to get a tree with a slightly wider trunk, um, so when it is this size, it looks realistic. And again, you want to get a higher resolution tree. What you can then do is come to your, oh, come to your adjustments layer, click on Hue, Saturation, and just press Alt again to just clip it to this layer. Decrease your saturation and the brightness because obviously the tree is kind of not lit up by anything. And you can also adjust the colors if you want. So you can make like a, I don't know, a green, bright pink tree if you really wanted to. So I've placed in my trees. As you can see, the image we've got obviously is the same image as what I showed at the beginning. Um, but that is working fairly well. Now we're basically done. This image is there it's sorted the last thing you want to do really is export the image you can then if you have adobe lightroom um color grade it in adobe lightroom if you don't have adobe lightroom i'll just show you really quickly how you can do a nice quick color grade in photoshop so all i've done there is selected all the layers pressed command g just created it into a group you press command j then you create a new group um, and all we're doing here is we're just going to merge all of these layers just to create one block solid image. Now, before you go any further, do not, I repeat, do not do that to your original file. You want to keep this here. All of these layers that you've been editing, just leave them there. Don't group these together. Because if you do find you want to come back and change any of the individual layers, you can from this, but you can't from this layer here. So just keep that in mind. Then what we want to do, press Shift Command A. This is going to bring up the adjustments panel. I think it's shift control A for Windows, but if it's not, search camera uh, raw into help or something like that and it'll bring it up. Okay, so now we've got that up. It's really simple. All you want to do is just change all of these things and you just mess around with what you want. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm going to decrease the contrast ever so slightly. I quite like bringing up the highlights in nighttime photos. If you decrease the highlights, it just makes the image really flat and dark. So increase the highlights decrease the shadows, increase the whites, decrease the blacks, um, 
This is really fast color grade stuff. I'm going too fast for you guys. I'm sorry, but we've got some other color grading videos on the channel if you want to check those out. There probably is a playlist, I think, called color grades or how to edit like or something. Um, I like to increase the vibrance probably to about plus 10 and then just decrease the saturation slightly. Um, so that's basically our main uh, basic panel done. Uh, because it's nighttime, I am going to just add a bit more blues, make it a bit minus 9. Next one is tone curves. I just do my simple usual basic tone curve which is an S curve with some fade in it so you increase the highlights decrease the shadow mid-tone things uh, lift up the shadows just adding some fade decrease the highlights as you do this sometimes you'll find it actually looks uh, a lot more saturated um, so we can go back and fix that in a bit now this is detail you might want to add a bit of noise reduction because you may find when you've done all this color grading to all these photos. All of these photos are different resolutions. Um, so when you do some edits to them, you're going to lose quality as you go through. So you may want to add a bit of noise reduction just to sort of fix that. Now, I like to come over to this camera calibration and I like to make it sort of teal and orange. The way I do that is make this about 50% on the red primary and about, uh, in this case, we've got quite a bit of blue. So I'm going to make it probably about minus 19 in the blue primary. And then mess around with the saturation of each. And you've got on yourself a nice sort of tearly blues. And if there are any oranges, you make them all orange, basically. So there we go. That is our color grade done-ish, fairly complete. And you can see the difference that makes just by finishing off the image, making everything fit a lot better uh, together. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do it, basically. That's a really quick color grade. Um, I hope that was useful. I hope this video wasn't too long. It's probably going to turn out to be about 20, maybe even 30 minutes now. Um, but that's just, I wanted to walk you guys through how you did it as opposed to just show you each of my layers. It's a lot easier to understand how it's done if you see it done and explained through it. So again, I'm sorry if that video was really long, but I've been asked by quite a few times, for, uh, quite a few people for quite a long time to do one of these videos. So thank you so much if you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, if you want to see any more like this, if you want me to create this into a series, let me know. Um, I will probably create a playlist of these videos at some point. They are quite lengthy to film. Um, if there's any other videos you guys want to see, just leave a comment down below. But we do get hundreds of comments, so it is a lot easier if you come and follow us on Instagram and just send us a message um, because we get a lot less of those. So we'll be able to see your messages easier. If there are any questions you want to ask, um, just let us know on Instagram. See you in the next video, guys. Live long and prosper.